Um, I'd like to uh, call the meeting to order and do roll call. Signify please by saying I or here. Um, Jack is here. Uh, Sarah is not here yet. Susan here. is here. Uh, Art. Here. Okay. Um, Michelle. Yes, here. Sheila. I'm here. Uh, Prudence. Here. Yeah. All right. Uh, and I believe we have a guest today, Julie Hauser, who will be speaking to us. Julie, I'm sorry I don't have you on my, let me just see. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, Janine, I'm not speaking, I'm just here. You're just Janine. here too. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Um, Julie, you are invited to be heard if there is anything that you would like to say. Nope, I'm good. Just here, to, good. here to hear, listen in on see, and see what's going on. Okay, great. All right, thanks. Well, welcome. We're glad thanks. you're here. Uh, do we need to review any of the protocols or every or is everyone comfortable with passing on from that? Yes, Marcia? Um, just for the record, Sarah did join us now. Oh, okay. Sarah, are you here? I am, I am here. Okay. Unfortunately, right. I had trouble finding how to get into the meeting. So that was my, my bad. Has everyone had the opportunity to review the minutes from last month's meeting? I have a couple of corrections. All right, Michelle. Let me let me go find them. In the meantime, I have one correction. Um, in the paragraph about the August minutes, I, it should read that Jack seconded Michelle's motion. Okay, thank you. And under um, new business. Um, number two, it should be only rooms D and E and the gym, not the G-Y-N. <laughs> I thought that people would get a um, kick out of that. Thank and then um, and then also down in the uh, AAC continues its, oh wait, so we're, we're down in the um, under reports. I had, state has developed a roadmap for the goals. I think it's probably... I, I'm guessing that should be like climate change goals, just so we kind of orient the reader. And then it should be global warming, but I would advocate for climate change as opposed to global war, as opposed to global warning. So those are my two, three comments. And I have a question. In where it says members present, et cetera, Prudence, were you here last month? Your names doesn't appear. No, Prudence wasn't, was not no, here this time. I was not here. Okay. And uh, this is Michelle, and I just want to make one um, also edit to the minutes under reports. Uh, Michelle has applied on behalf of the friends for $27,000, not to the friends. I asked them for a lot of things, but not this one. <laughs> and to where did you make that application? If, um, I, I applied to Boulder County AAA, Sarah. Thank you. Yeah. Nice minutes though. Thank you, Sarah, I appreciate it. Well, if I had written them up, Sooner after the meeting, they would not, perhaps not have had so many mistakes. <laughs> I hear a motion to accept the minutes of September 2020 meeting. With the changes. With the changes. Who's motion? I so move. I, I second. I didn't know who said that. 
Michelle. Thank you. Michelle moved and um, Susan seconded. Susan seconded. Okay. Uh, old business comments regarding sustainability handouts. Does anyone have any comments for that? No? All right. Um, new business. Is there any other new business to report or discuss? I have a question. Will we be looking at uh, empty seats at the end of the year to be filled? Great, great question, um, Susan. I did send out some information to an interested board member. Applications are being taken now. Um, I need to shrink my screen and go to my email to give you when they're due by. Um, they're being taken now and uh, um, let's see, the deadline is going to be 5 p.m. on November 6th. I can send out information. Um, about this, uh, I can forward an email from the city clerk's office to board members. And then the terms that are going to be up are, I'm going there, pardon my delay here. Um, the terms that are gonna be up are, hang on just a second, I'm going. Um, Sarah Berry, your term is up at the end of this year, but I do, and Jack Belchinski, your term is up at the end of the year, and Michelle Krieger, your term is up at the end of the year of this year. Those three, what I don't know is if you're on your first or second term, so Sarah, Jack, and Michelle, and then Sheila, you are the alternate. And if you want to apply for a regular position, you need to do that. So Sarah, Jack, and Michelle, your terms are up December 31st of this year. Do you know if you're eligible for um, reapplying? Michelle, this is Sarah. Yeah. Um, first, I'd like to ask for some help from the the Zoom manager, somehow I am out of the meeting visual. Um, and I don't know how to get back in, so. Um, what, do you, what do you mean, your view is wrong? Like what you're seeing on your screen, Sarah? On the screen, all I'm seeing is the word Zoom in big letters. Huh. Oh. That is really interesting. Um, do you want to, let me see here, because I, I can I suggest there's a blue, I, at least on mine, there's a blue icon down in the, in the bottom. It's so the Zoom is usually the, the, the page on the, what do I want to say, the internet. But there is a blue icon down below that has a camera on it. And I don't know if you can see that, Sarah, but if you open that, that should be the visual. It's not on the bottom, but I see it and it's, I'm clicking it and it's, Nothing is changing. Okay. I think I probably have to go out and come back in. You can try that, Sarah, if that's the easiest way for you. Okay. Um, before I leave, though, I would just say that I will not be applying for, I don't know whether I'm eligible, I don't remember, but I'm not applying for a new term because I expect that during that next year, I'm going to be leaving um, Longmont, moving to another facility or another um, uh, location. Wow. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Not my best day, let's say. Oh. Julie? Sarah, before you go, are you open in your web browser? Because generally what will happen is that if your web browser is open, this screen that we can all see each other on 
will pop up behind it. So if you minimize your web browser, you might find that this panel that we can all see each other on is behind that. Um, let me see. Wish I knew more about computers. <laughs> now I I now have the screen with a view of everybody. Good deal. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Sorry about that. Sheila? Yes, to get back to the um, renewing the, the uh, membership in the, on the board, um, I'm, in fact, I have it on, I got a renewal and I have it in front of me. I was just filling it out. So I'm going to fill it out to have another year. Great. If acceptable. So Sheila, you're applying uh, just in general and then it'll go from there. So great. Yes, it's asked me to do do the whole application again, and there also is um, the, the question about being willing to carry on as an alternate. So. Super. My mm -hmm. understanding, and Marcia can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think interviews are going to be the first week of December and appointments the second week of December, of, of course, at a council meeting, but that's my understanding today. <laughs> so. So Sheila, I was the alternate for a year and then I came on the board and it's just a way that they get an extra year out of you. So I'm glad you're applying. <laughs> Thank you, Susan. <laughs> so on that night note, um, I would also like people to be thinking about who might be interested. And I know there will be many in uh, being president of our board. So just a thought, just put it in the back of your minds and think, yes, Art. Uh, what is the age that they, in order to qualify to be on the board? Four out of seven people have to be over 55. Thank you. You bet, good question. Uh, is there any other business that we need to discuss at this time? Yes, That's Susan. A comment. So many losses, can't go to the senior center, everything's restricted, but the latest loss was the beginning of last month. We lost Centura Health Integrative Medicine. They closed the doors, which served a lot of seniors. Yes, Jack. Jack, did you have a question? Yes. Can you hear me? Oh, now. Yes, now. Okay. Um, if you use their services and you use the credit card and you do not use all the monies on your credit card, you can call uh, Longmont United and speak to their finance person and they will send you a rebate in the form of a check for what you did not use. That's fine, but the services are missing for so many people that depended on them. Yeah, I'm I do, that part as well. Yeah. I do Just know with, that their massage uh, therapists have moved into a private practice. Um, on 14th and uh, Francis, if and, and I can get information about at least the massage therapy uh, and cranial sacral uh, therapy uh, practitioners, if anyone thinks that would be helpful. Please send it to me, I'm interested. I will do that, okay. 
I'd like to uh, move on to reports. Um, Michelle, do you have anything to share with us this morning? Michelle Wade. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Um, so where uh, we're headed in terms of reopening is hopefully uh, December 1st. It will be in conjunction with our winter go. Please don't hold me to that. Um, obviously, it is dependent on Boulder County Public Health and how our uh, statistics here in Boulder County continue to go. Um, but that's kind of what the staff are looking at and it will be minimal opening. It won't be everything opening. Um, and it will be very uh, structured, scheduled, controlled kind of opening. So that's kind of what the staff are looking at right now. And um, I, will, I will know more uh, hopefully by the November board meeting. Uh, with regard to Longmont United Hospital, we have had an agreement with Longmont United Hospital for almost 20 years. Um, when the then Prestige Plus, which was their age well program, uh, was formed and they have been on site. And so with kind of a perfect storm of things happening, um, Centura making corporate decisions relative to the services from the Center for Health uh, Integrated Medicine canceling, closing doors, uh, letting staff go. That was one piece. And then certainly the pandemic and the closing of the senior center was the other piece. And so Renita has continued to participate with staff on behalf of Longmont United Hospital planning programs and doing them virtually. Uh, right now, uh, Longmont United Hill uh, Centura staff have indicated they're going to pick up those pieces which Renita com committed to, um, and not all of them are being um, able to be committed to. So right now, Longmont United Hospital says they want to continue the arrangement we have here at the Senior Center. Um, as you all know, we were going to rethink the foot care clinic uh, service um, and it may be time to rethink our arrangement with a healthcare professional in terms of our health education and health services. I'm not sure. It's, you know, the pandemic has created obviously some absolute uh, situations that none of us anticipated. But right now, I do not have a single point person at Longmont United to work with. And that, um, that's my goal for this week and next week is to try and figure out that uh, communication partnership link. Uh, Renita's last day was Friday, last Friday. Um, and so between the changes at LUH and the pandemic, we just kind of need to rethink where we're headed and so that is definitely on my horizon. And as I move that forward, the foot clinic will probably be a part of that conversation. So that's kind of what's happening with that. Um, we recently, um, Brandy Queen and myself have been a part of a countywide group called the Elder Justice Coalition. Uh, Longmont Senior Services started some work back in the, the late 1990s around elder abuse and education regarding elder abuse. Um, and then the county in 2006 got a grant through the Office of the um, Violence uh, Against Women uh, Prevention Grant and in 2006, 7, and 8. And we actually, the county and the Elder Justice Coalition just got another grant. It's several hundred thousand dollars. It's a three-year grant um, to look at education of police um, throughout the criminal justice system, actually. Judges, uh, uh, district attorneys involved, our safe shelter and safe house progressive 
uh, Alliance for Nonviolence is involved, MESA, Moving to End Sexual Assault is involved, Adult Protection, Longmont Senior Services, and I'm really thrilled to say Chris Merkel, one of our Longmont Police Detectives, is on the national training team, and he will be helping um, locally with training police, judge, fire, other professionals. Um, so it's really exciting that we're going to be able to refresh that training, reach out to new uh, officers, new firefighters, new folks who are in the aging world and really beef up our training. So very excited about that grant and really glad to be a part of that. And Brandy and I will both be involved in um, moving that grant forward. So that's pretty exciting. Um, we've been getting really great feedback on some of the virtual programs. So uh, we're all still kind of learning. We are still monitoring all those virtual programs with staff. Um, the senior computer tech programs are also going very well. And we are working on a countywide effort along with city staff who have CARES funding and the digital divide funding to get devices and education and Wi-Fi connectivity to older adults in Longmont. So those pieces are slowly but surely uh, coming together and so we're excited about that. Um, still have lots of staff helping support Longmont Housing Authority work. Um, I think I've mentioned in the past, uh, Deanne and Monica have taken on the file room at the LHA admin building and are feeling quite proud of the very visible impact they've been able to make and helping organize some of that paper um, at LHA. Brandy continues to supervise the supportive services staff person at the suites. Um, I continue to be involved in the property management end of things and my learning curve is a straight up um, and I am way behind on many things uh, because that has uh, sort of taken precedence, but um, we're doing some hiring, we're mm, trying to negotiate some challenge uh, emergency situations, and then we just started the um, process for the construction at Aspen Meadows Apartments. And so some of those folks are going to have to move out for a period of time while that construction occurs. And I'm really thrilled to say uh, Teresa Schulte said yes to being uh, what I am calling her is the relocation queen. So she is, uh, she's working with the folks, the tenants at Aspen Meadows Apartments and helping negotiate the apartments, the packing, the moving, the hotel, um, all those kinds of logistics. So um, Teresa is doing that work for us. Um, Martine and Griffin are still spending the majority of their time cleaning at recreation facilities at the Memorial Building, mm -hmm. Centennial Pool, and the Rec Center. And they will come home when we reopen. Um, and we are all doing our best to stay in touch in this virtual world and uh, celebrate birthdays and celebrate uh, length of employment milestones and, you know, personal uh, celebrations as well and I cannot tell you how phenomenal I have always respected this group of people whom I'm very fortunate to work with and they have they have just been amazing so uh, that's been that's been a real highlight um, <laughs> can't think uh, I think that's probably it unless you have a question for me about anything so No, I don't have a question, but I, oh. you know, that I, right, yes, yeah. Art, go ahead. Okay, I was going to ask, now, I want to get clarification. You're talking about, uh, again, limited uh, or minimal opening in uh, on December 1st. Mm -hmm. Now, last month, we talked about opening the gym and some of these other things. Now, did that happen or not? 
No, it has not happened yet, Art. I have to submit a reopening plan to Boulder County Public okay. Health, and I have not done that yet. Um, as the cases were rising over the last two to three weeks, especially in Boulder, uh, we were not getting a, a green light to go ahead and submit anything. So we kind of slowed down our uh, our approach and now things seem to be going in in a better direction so we'll get back on board with that okay. so no it did not happen okay and then one more question someone uh that i was talking in fact it was Rivaldo valdez and i were talking the other day and we got into the discussion about elderly abuse uh <laughs> and is that you know i know with with juveniles or children those have to be they have to be reported by law through law if, if law enforcement or anybody else is it's brought to their attention is this, is that hold true with uh, uh, adults as well it does are in 2016 Colorado passed the mandatory reporting law of elder abuse they define an elder as somebody over the age of 70 that was what the state committee recommended um, so the age is 70 you mandatory report to your police department and then local uh, police law enforcement work with adult protection to um, investigate and respond to those situations recently the state of colorado did a uh, research analysis and found that um I think, don't quote me, 18% um, of cases um, should have been further investigated and were not. So please don't quote me on that. I'm probably not saying that correctly. So we know that we have work to do. Um, we have people who are mandatory reporters who don't know that they're mandatory reporters. So we have work to do on that. Um, and so there is, uh, there is definitely room for more education throughout the entire system. And um, I'm really looking forward to this grant helping us do that. Thank you. You bet. Great questions. Thank you. Susan. Do you have any kind of estimated time frame where you'll be hiring somebody to take over the housing authority? So we've started doing interviews now for some key positions, Susan. And so um, we have two community manager positions, a maintenance tech position, a um, some accounting, I'm not exactly sure what those job titles are, but some accounting positions. And then um, I believe we are soon going to advertise for a portfolio manager. And that person is responsible for all nine properties um, and the staff who work there. So it's, it's been a gradual um, process. I, I think that those there are folks Marsha included and the city manager who will be looking at other decisions related to the housing authority that that I'm really not a part of um, so there could still be more things to come but right now we're trying to fill those key positions so then you will be easing out <laughs> in the foreseeable future of that role <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, you know, it has been, um, yes, I will be easing out and I am really glad I had this opportunity to jump in. It's been uh, overwhelming in terms of knowledge um, and overwhelming in some cases in terms of emotion. We've had some tough situations, but I feel like myself and my staff are in a fabulous position to do good work on behalf of older people in Longmont. Amy, Melissa, and Veronica are now spending time at each of the senior buildings, making really good connections with tenants uh, there. Teresa is doing great work at Aspen Meadows in a very difficult situation. So I'm really glad we've had this opportunity. Um, and I'm also super excited to get the Senior Center back open and get back on track. Thank you.
Marcia, sorry, go ahead. That's okay. I'd just like to add um, at the one question that, that Michelle didn't answer, which is the, the um, uh, chairman or, or, or president of the organization, that uh, I think Harold's current thinking is that it needs to, the final organization needs to be settled and, it need, and the organization needs to operate in its new configuration so that they can decide what the skills are for the leader before, before Harold um, replaces himself in that role. And I just have to say, um, I have not worked super closely with Harold in a lot of projects and um, my respect for him and my appreciation for all he does has grown immensely through this process. It, um, not that it was ever bad, but I've just had opportunity and um, I, am, I am very, very respectful of all he knows and all he does and he jumped in full on in a couple of the emergencies and I really am super appreciative of that. I have to second that. He is an amazing person who is uh, conversant with every aspect of running this city. Um, it's, it's truly amazing how anyone could have that breadth of understanding and that depth of dedication that yeah. he has. Janine, I think you had a question. I'm sorry, Beck. Uh, oh, I don't. I've just been thinking about your health services um, issues right now, and I want to let you know that I just renewed both my RN and nurse practitioner license. And in the interim, if you have any needs, any acute needs, I'd like to volunteer for the senior center to be a support system for you in any way that I could be. That is great. Thanks, Janine. I do, I do know for sure, as this unfolds, if we end up opening another RFP or looking at doing this differently, it is really going to be the advisory board who helps craft that. And your uh, knowledge and expertise and others, especially around healthcare, will be really important. Um, I'm sorry that I can't see everyone on my screen. So is there anyone else who has um, any questions or comments for Michelle? No? Okay. Um, City Council, Marsha, are if their contributions. You're muted, Marcia. Marcia, you're, you're muted. Sorry about that. Sometimes the space bar works to unmute me and sometimes it doesn't. I was holding down the space bar, but not looking at my little red microphone, sorry. <laughs> the, um, the city council has been focusing on the budget, um, and on the parking ordinances for RVs, and that's pretty much used everything up. So we are due for another report soon on the Longmont Housing Authority. Um, and Michelle, do you um, have any questions or concerns about the funding for the Senior Center? Because I didn't notice any, but I am, not the most acute person when it comes to money. So for 2021, Marsha, is that what yes. you're, yeah, I think we are, we are good. Um, the one piece that I wanted was that one quarter of the marketing person would actually get funded by the general fund because she is doing so much on behalf of the whole city. Mm -hmm. um, and that is in the budget. And I feel very good about that. So thank Excellent. you for asking. Excellent. I, I feel like the, the, um, the essential services are coming out pretty well so far. Um, so um, the other thing that I have to report is 
is that I've had some extended conversations with uh, Chief Spendlow, who I have to say uh, is is doing an excellent job with with a, a a difficult role entering it as at a difficult time. Um, a few of you are are um, going to be participating with me in a, a conversation that, by the way, I've um, checked with legal and and there is no conflict with being on this board and participating in that um, public initiative. So uh, he doesn't have a problem with that. Eugene doesn't have a problem with that. Um, but I've been talking to him on a variety of, of uh, issues right up to um, contingency plans for if there's violence around, um, around the election. And uh, I would have to say that they are um, on top of the issue as much as they can be. Uh, in case anybody's been worrying about that. And, you know, if you've driven down North Maine um, on a Saturday afternoon or Jack, if you've been standing there, you know that, that things are fairly edgy right now. Um, so they are planning for it. And uh, I, it, it's, it depends on, on, what's needed, whether there'll be sufficient resources or not, but they are working out uh, cooperative agreements, resource agreements with other cities, which is about the only option that we have. So uh, any questions about that? Yeah, Sheila. I'm going to be at the Longmont Hub on election day. Uh, into serving in a new position and I think it's called I'm a tracker anyway I, and I assume I'm going to be supplied with a stopwatch or something similar the idea is to determine how long people wait in line how long it takes them to fill out a ballot um, how long it takes them to use the fairly new electronic voting systems so I'm looking forward to it and I have a little apprehension that um, I hope that I will be well designated as an official election worker and uh, I won't come across anybody who thinks I am not what I say I am. So I, will, <laughs> I, I hope will, so too. I will report back. Thank you very much. Thank you for doing that. As a, as a former election judge, uh, I would say that um, Boulder County Elections has always done a really effective job. Yeah, I've worked with them before and I'm always impressed. Excellent work. Yes. Jack. Can you hear me? Yes. What's doing with our post office services? Are they safe? Um, I didn't hear the question. Uh, What's Jack happening asked with our postal services? Are they safe? Thank you. I, I don't think there's any question about safety. And there was a Colorado report that said that there have not been significant delays, except in a few isolated cases. Now, one of the isolated cases was my last medicine order. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, uh, but I, but I think they have realized that that some of those early um, efficiency measures were misguided and backed off at the local level. So, um, I mean, I wouldn't ever consider mailing my ballot in. Um, you know, I, I especially since we have a pretty uh, accessible group of, of drop off locations. Um, but and you can also walk in to the hub and drop off your ballot if you don't like the outdoor drop boxes. And I may even do that this year. Um, but uh, nevertheless, there is a study that says that, that, that our mail is okay. Thank you. Anybody else? I've, I've voted by mail for the last 20 years. I've lived in Larimer County because uh, I live in rural Larimer County. So mm -hmm. it was hard for me to understand what the big deal was. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, I don't think it ever was a big deal before. Um, True. But uh, yeah, this year. And the other thing is, I don't know whether it's true in Larimer County, um, Michelle. You're probably not the uh, probably the only non Boulder County resident here, right? But um, uh, Boulder County Elections has a really good ballot tracker service where you can get texts or emails or both uh, when your ballot is received, processed, and and that's a really good thing because you know if they have questions about your signature or something you want to get in there and remedy that before the election gets called um so that's my other big election advice is sign up for ballot tracker okay thanks you're muted janine Sarah, do you have anything to report on the Area Agency on Aging? Yes, briefly. Uh, we had a meeting last Friday. Um, it was primarily reports from various persons about activities going on outside the uh, Area Aging Council. Uh, the first one was a report from Erica Colson on the a long-term care ombudsman program. And just to mention a couple things that I learned from that discussion, um, that program, the staff of that program have to comply with myriad regulations from federal, state, local government, um, as well as the program's own um, internal, rules of operation. So it's pretty complicated. Um, CMS on the federal level uh, regulates um, visitation to long-term care facilities. The state uh, through the Department of Health and Public something, I can't remember that exact term, but the, the department that controls Medicaid um, may have conflicting uh, rules in place. The state has executive orders. Um, Boulder County Public Health has county specific orders, particularly regarding COVID. Um, and then the state ombudsman sends out directives to them, as well as the direction that comes from the county commissioners and management. So it's a pretty complicated um, or um, context in which to work. Uh, they have not been able to visit the facilities uh, indoors since March, um, mainly been doing virtual visits, which I can understand would be very difficult with uh, somebody that was in a facility because of lack of um, abilities. But as of September 1st, they've started doing outdoor visits. So if the patient is able to come outside and they can meet with them there. Um, oh, and one more thing about uh, the regulations under which they operate. If the facility is part of a corporate structure, then they have to deal with whatever rules that business has set up for access to patients. So I have a, a much greater appreciation for the uh, complexity of what that person does. Um, and they gave us the contact information, uh, which is relatively easy. Uh, if anybody wants the phone number for that uh, ombudsman position or the email address, Send it to you. Um, not hearing anything, I'll move ahead. We had the third and last uh, session on the education um, program on reforming uh, aging. Um, and Michelle, you asked if I wanted that 
outline to be sent out to the board members? I went ahead and sent it, Sarah, so everybody did get it. Okay. Um, I just say that that's a sample of what uh, the training included and the purpose of it. And if you review that, uh, we'll apparently be making a decision sometime in the future about whether we would like a presentation to our board on that subject. I just make one summary comment. I think the goal of that is that we develop a sensitivity for how the language that's used about elders, the aging process, et cetera, how that sort of um, without our realizing it has an effect on how we frame issues and make decisions about programs for, uh, for older people. And I, I think for that reason, uh, it's sort of like having training on um, institutional racism and how you don't recognize that how you frame an issue and the language that you use in describing it affects how you proceed to try to develop solutions to problems. I, I probably would be a voice in favor of our sometime down the road um, having that uh, training. And the last training exercise was um, on guardianship and conservatorship. We had an elder law attorney present on that. And her outline is available uh, if anybody's particularly interested in that subject matter. Um, let me know and I can get you that outline. Sarah, I would be very interested in that outline. Okay. We, um, in the first round of our elder abuse training back in 06, 07, 08, we involved Judge Roxanne Balin and spent quite a bit of time with her talking about guardianships and the local court being more invested in how they selected a guardian and also how they monitored guardians. Um, so it definitely can play into the whole arena of elder abuse. And so I would be very interested in that information. Okay. Me too, I, Sarah, Susan. Her, her presentation probably did not go into that same level of detail, but it's a good general outline about how the system works. And I'll get that to you. Um, Thank you. And to me, Sarah. Excuse me, Susan? Yeah, send it to me too. I'll just send it to everybody. Um, The final thing that they did, we did on Friday was to hear from the resource specialists from various locations, including Veronica, about what's been happening with the requests for uh, resources uh, during COVID. And Veronica reported that there's been an increase in the long that cases uh, since April, both phone inquiries and email, um, and many of them, um, she says, have involved financial problems because of loss of job um, or inability to pay rent. Um, and this refle is re a reflection of the fact that we serve many seniors who are still employed, or would have been employed, were it not for COVID. Um, so the new people seeking help continues, the number continues to grow. Lafayette did an interesting thing that they had a, a system of proactive outreach. Outreach. Uh, their resource specialist contacted, affirmatively contacted some 300 people that they had in their files as having been served uh, in the past. Um, and as a smaller community um, and smaller senior program, um, it's been hard for them to handle um, the complexity of, 
of uh, services when they can't make home visits. Um, and um, they do not have full access to um, language translation. Um, Neil mentioned a uh, interesting thing that I never would have thought of. He said that he manages the call-in system, uh, re people requesting resources for uh, AAA. And he said that most callers rarely know what they need. They'll call just with, you know, I've got this, I can't pay my rent or, you know, some general problem like that. And so one of their jobs is to, to investigate, um, try to figure out exactly what it is that that person is looking for. Um, I think, well, Another um, problem they mentioned, which I would never have thought of, is that for mountain residents, transportation is a big problem. And they mentioned that people often would hitchhike into town to get groceries. Well, during COVID, people are not picking up hitchhikers. So they've had to figure out a different um, method of getting food to people. Oh, the final thing on that, I think, um, was something that also surprised me. And they reported that uh, it's rare for caregivers, family caregivers specifically, to call seeking help. And this sort of confirms a, an observation that I made among my friends and acquaintances is that it's really hard to convince a family caregiver that they need or should, or that it's okay to take advantage of services available from senior services or AAA or elsewhere. And that often they'll try everything <laughs> to try to solve the problem themselves uh, before they'll ask for assistance. So that's my report. Janine, you're muted again, sorry. Now you're muted, but before we couldn't hear you either. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I was sneezing with uh, allergies, so I wanted to go off. Um, Susan, do you have anything to report on friends? Yep, still meeting regularly, still have healthy funds available to the senior center. Um, so some of that is being diverted and tracked as COVID funding, whether it's people needing rents or hearing aids or whatever they need help with. And then increased monies going to help fund the technology program, which is benefiting people who are willing to learn. And uh, the last big thing that, well, they've got people working on don't updating our donor book and the plaques that are available in the lobby when people do give a large donation. And I guess within the next month or so, you should be seeing the annual brochure asking people to see if they would be willing to donate to the friends, uh, especially this year with all the extra needs and requirements. I would add, um, if I can, Susan, the friends is doing some kind of cleanup, reorganizing and rethinking their board manual, but also their fiscal policies. So if you are ever interested in that, um, please know the friends do have some fairly strict guidelines around their investment philosophy, their spending philosophy, 
and guidelines around financial policies around that. And so they are uh, kind of gathering all of those things in one place and are really looking at having a, a whole sort of fiscal approach, um, which I think is really great because sometimes they would pass uh, a motion in a meeting and it would end up in the minutes and it might have been related to financial issues. So really trying to capture all of that into an overall fiscal approach. And so um, I feel really good about what they're, they're doing with that. And they have several retired and uh, active CPAs now. And um, I think they're giving good, good advice for, uh, you know, the long term. So that's, I'm very thrilled about that. there anything else to add to that? No? Okay. Nope. Um, Michelle, do you have anything to report on TRG? Nothing to report on TRG. Okay. Art, do you have anything to report on uh, Boulder County Latino Coalition? Sarah? So Sarah, Art, I do. Art and Sarah, you're both muted. So Art, we didn't hear what you had to say about the Latino Coalition. Okay. One of the things that uh, probably most of us know is that uh, <clears throat> there's doing some remodeling at the county buildings. And one of the things that uh, Robin Bell has reported on is that uh, if anybody's going to go down there, if you know people that are, are going there, to make sure to call and make sure they don't need an appointment, an appointment to go in and see someone there. Uh, the other thing is dealing with driver's license. If you know of anybody that's trying to get their driver's license renewed, it's to encourage them to make an appointment. Uh, I personally went up there a couple of weeks ago not realizing that my license were due. And, uh, uh, and, and I waited for about an hour, hour and a half and never were able to get in because they're taking the people with the appointments. And if there's a break in between, they'll take, they'll take someone in the hour and a half that I was there, no one got in. So again, call in for an appointment if you need that. Uh, one, of the other, Percy, one of the people that reported last time was Louis Lopez with the Alternatives for Youth. And he gave a real good report about, you know, doing what they can with the kids. Uh, again, no uh, in-person meeting, but, uh, you know, they're doing some feeding and, 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 again, encouraging kids to do what needs to be done. But he says there's a lot more kids out, obviously, due to school the way it is. So if you see a lot of, if you see some youngsters around your area, uh, there's nothing wrong with keeping an eye on them because he says vandalism has gone on, gone up a little bit. Kids will be kids. And uh, so just keep an eye and, and, uh, if, if there's any concern, there's no hesitation in calling the police if you, if there, if you need, if you feel it needs to be done. Uh, Bob Norris made a report again about the, uh, the new safety chief uh, or the director of public safety. And uh, he said that uh, if anybody has any, any comments or whatever that Harold has extended uh, an invitation to have people call him, leave a message, or whatever about individuals that, or, or, or qualifications that the individual should, uh, we should be looking at with a new uh, safety chief. Uh, I was, we were also, it was also mentioned that Marta Moreno recently retired. I don't know how long ago that was, but I guess that she's been about 40 years in the community, being an advocate for, for community members. And uh, that was a thing that was brought up. And then the other thing was, uh, again, uh, they didn't get specific, but there was a report about undocumented workers still uh, uh, having issues with, with different things. And they're just saying that there's any organizations that, uh, and, and I primarily hear 
I would say with us, we don't ask people if they're documented when they come to the center or things like that. I told them, I didn't think we did, but that, it, that question did come up. Not only with us, but I mean anybody. So, uh, you know, Ari, that's a great point. Um, that is not the first question we ask. There are certainly resources that are not available to individuals who don't have their documentation, but Veronica and Amy and Melissa know what is available as well as uh, what, what might not be available, but, but they will visit with anyone uh, who, who gives them a call, absolutely. Okay, and I, that's what I told them, to continue to go in there and see Veronica and if they'll, they'll help them and take care of them. That's my report. Uh, Michelle TRG. I already said that there's nothing to report. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, Longmont Economic Development Partnership. Um, I have nothing to report at this time, although I know that uh, we participate quarterly, but I haven't had any feedback or heard anything from them for about the last six months. So I plan to contact them and find out when our quarterly participation uh, will take place. Um, Jack, do you have anything to report on sustainability? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, just a quick review of 10 areas the sustainability plan addresses. Just a quick review. Air quality, buildings and infrastructure, community cohesion and resilience, economic vitality, energy, food system, natural environment, transportation, waste and water. Now the next meet, the last meeting they talked about uh, the Climate Action Task Force, which includes uh, adaptation and resiliency, building and emergency use, and energy use, excuse me, education and outreach, land use and waste management, renewable energy and transportation. During the meeting, they talked about uh, a Climate Action Task Force recommendation for the city, namely increasing charging stations for EV vehicles. They talked about bus stops and maybe revamping some of the way passengers are picked up. They talked about something about pay for parking recommendation. Not quite sure how that went over for with the uh, community members and uh, local businesses but they're planning on thinking about, and I think they're bringing it to the city council if they haven't already, Marsha can address that. Um, and there's something about a sustainability tax. Boulder County in 2016 had a sustainability tax on sales and use tax revenues and Longmont received $125,000. And they're using some of that money, thinking about a three-quarter time grant coordinator, residential program coordinator, and trying to do work on carbon-free transportation roadmap, working with the farmer's market program here in Longmont, and a neighborhood impact grant program to help local communities do things for sustainability, whether it's waste management, air quality, et cetera, et cetera. And there was something else that came up, and I think I talked about it quickly last time. The Platte River uh, Power Authority had two public uh, programs for the public to participate in because they're planning on closing down another coal plant and which really bothered me is to want to go to gas or natural energy and I must say most of the participants and public 
uh, announcements on how they felt about it. Gas, of course, comes from the fracking. And uh, as we all know, fracking poses a problem to our health and certainly our environment. And they certainly got an overabundance of negative feelings about having the gas run our new power plant and hopefully they'll use natural energy. But that's up to them and it's under consideration now. And there's something else I'd like to mention. We've had fires locally and uh, one in Larimer County certainly. And I just want the folks pleasant to know that these fires impact our health. And Janine will certainly agree with that, that it's bad for your lungs and seniors especially should be careful and probably wearing masks and limiting their outdoor activity. There's 11 states that have fires. There's 4.2 million acres that are burning now. And many of the big fires, the camp in Colorado, the Cameron Peak Fire is only 42% contained. It's 127,393 acres. The Williams Fork Fire is 13,785, is only 25% contained. So I think seniors, or maybe something can be put into the uh, magazine we put out that seniors should be more aware of their time outside because it's very, very harmful to their lungs. Not only the carcinogenicity, but the irritation that it causes especially if the older folks have asthma or any respiratory problems, I think it's something we should consider and be careful about. That's it. Thank you. Next meeting, by the way, is October the 28th, and it's going to be virtual. And probably if I have the uh, minutes of the meeting, I could report on it in November or early December. Thank you. Can any can anyone else hear me? Can you hear me now? Okay. No, I can. Yes. Um, there is. If we do do an article on there um, in in the go uh, addressing that, uh, there is a daily uh, website that Longmont uh, does publish that tells about air quality and whether it's safe to go outdoors. I mean, right now for high risk populations, no day is safe to go out really, except for very limited exposure. And just because you don't smell the smoke in the air, it doesn't mean that the particulates are not there. So. Uh, and the anticipation is because there's not a lot of funding for uh, fighting those fires are that we will probably be looking at poor air quality for at least another six weeks unless we get some miracle snow. Uh, so just to include that. Yeah, I, I, can I add something, please? Yes, uh, the uh, weather.com weather also has a part of their weather on, on the web that'll tell you about your air quality for this general area. It'll tell you about ozone and tell you about particulate matter within the air that one breathes. And if anyone's interested, there's something called a national, inter uh, a national interagency fire center dot org or n i f c dot org tell you about what's going on in western fires what their containment is and a lot of other good information if someone cares to partake and those fires are a, a serious problem by the way uh, sarah do you have anything to report on census Complete count? Well, the county um, committee has closed down operations. Well, it was my understanding that 
the National Census Bureau had uh, extended the period for one month to uh, report um, so that instead of September 30th as the ending date, October 31st would be. But I have no further information on that. Okay. I'd like to move on to closing uh, statements. Julie, is there anything you would like to ask, contribute, or uh, any statements you would like to make? No? Okay. Um, any other business that anyone has to contribute at this time? Janine, it looks like Marsha has her hand up. Thank you. <laughs> Marsha. Yeah, I just wanted to respond. There were two things in Jack's report that uh, he asked me to, to respond to and that I can. The first one is that uh, the way the recommendations of the Climate Action Task Force are being handled by the city staff is that um, the recommendations are being parceled out to the various operational departments that can handle them, such as waste management, water, um, and Longmont Power and Communications. And those recommendations are um, being evaluated to go on to the city work plan and the capital improvement plan. So um, uh, that's, that's a good thing. Some of them you may not see them for several years, um, but uh, in most cases, the plan for a plan is going to be in the 2021 uh, schedule. So, so that's a really good thing. Um, I monitor the Platte River Power Authority pretty closely, and there are uh, some serious problems with their process and I believe with their expertise. They've been a coal plant being a coal plant for a real long time. And the state of Colorado has now uh, said there will be no more coal by 2030 and no more uh, uh, natural gas by 2040 used to generate electricity. Uh, and they are not really, in my opinion, accepting the reality of that. They're, they're planning on building natural gas plants way late in, in the 20-year 20 year planning cycle. Um, I have a, 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 an article in yesterday's Times Call, and a good friend of mine has uh, an article in Friday's Times Call, last Friday's Times Call, uh, both of them um, opinion columns, not letters, that uh, I think everybody should take a look at. Well, you know, one exposes the problems in the process that they're following, and one exposes um, the wasteful spending that would uh, uh, happen if PRPA followed the plan. So um, I do encourage everybody to take a look. Marcia, I did not catch where that source is. The Times Call, both of them. Thank you. At our Uh, I think you're, uh, can you unmute? Does anyone have anything else to contribute at this time? Did you hear that, R? I'm going to unmute. Oh, okay. <laughs> Does anyone else have anything else to contribute at this time? May I have a motion then to uh, adjourn the meeting? So I'm adjourned. 
And do I hear a second? I second, Michelle. I thank you all for participating today. And uh, goodbye and have a good week. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.